Uh, hello there, dear Grasshopper users, hello computational designers. Uh, my name is Benjamin and today I would like to give you a brief introduction into the new, uh, newly developed plugin uh, Flexhopper for Grasshopper. And uh, it is a plugin for physics uh, simulation based on GPU computation. And uh, we are going to go through a quick tutorial on cloth simulation later. But first let's have a very brief introduction into Flexhopper and what it is and what it does, just for your interest. So Flexhopper is a um, physics uh, simulation plugin based on the game engine NVIDIA Flex that offers particle-based uh, pseudophysics simulation. Uh, it uses a unique approach of uh, unified particle physics. That means that you can simulate fluids, rigid bodies, soft bodies, cloth, all with one underlying particle model, but still have them be simulated in the same environment and interact with each other, which is very powerful. It runs on the GPU, it's therefore very fast, and it is written in C++ and CUDA. Uh, if you want, you can Google for NVIDIA Flex. Um, you will find, for example, this video. Here it shows the fine people that basically invented it. And you can have some, um, some good sample videos of that. So here you can see that it can, that is able to simulate fluids, rigid bodies, and cloth, and soft bodies as well, all in one simulation environment. It's very powerful. It also allows for a lot of particles to be simulated uh, in real time or at the same time. Let's see if we can find something else. Yeah. If you're interested, you can find a lot of these videos online. They are, I find them interesting. Um, okay, but as it is written in C++ and in CUDA, it's not as easily exposable to the .NET environment. That is like a high, a high level language environment in which we usually, usually uh, program Grasshopper plugins or Dynamo plugins for that matter. So what are Flex CLI and Flex Hopper? Flex CLI is a .NET wrapper for NVIDIA Flex. You can find it on this GitHub, on my GitHub page. Um, and Flex Hopper is the Grasshopper plugin that was built on top of Flex CLI. Now, uh, all of this is open source and I would like to encourage people who are interested, developers, to maybe join the Flex Hopper project or Flex CLI project. If you're interested, this is the GitHub address. I will post it down below uh, in the video description afterwards. Um, so what does Flexhopper offer? It offers the fast simulation of fluids, rigid bodies, soft bodies, springs, cloth, inflatables, and uh, custom constraints. I will try to upload as many tutorials in the upcoming days and weeks as possible. Today we will start with a rather simple um, cloth simulation. And at the very end, what does it require? Um, you will have to have a Windows machine, 7, 8, 8, 1, or Windows 10 should be fine. I developed it on Windows 10 64-bit. Maybe just try it. I also developed it in Rhino 5 uh, with this Grasshopper version. Maybe try it with, uh, there shouldn't be big problems with other versions as well, just try it. Um, also, I must add that this is like the first beta release now, so there might be quite some bumps and adventures along the way of making it work on your machine. So feel free, if you find that it doesn't work on your machine, please contact me or refer to the Food for Rhino page, the Grasshopper group, or in the best case, the GitHub issues page. Uh, you will have to have one of these drivers as well. You can see that here. And um, yeah, that's it so far for the introduction. And now we're going to jump into the um, cloth simulation tutorial. Have fun. So this is our simulation setup. You see a mesh kind of hanging from three anchor points. And we're going to simulate that mesh that consists of about 50,000 edges or springs um, as a hanging cloth. And you can see that it kind of acts under gravity and uh, yeah, has some folds. Then uh, we're going to add uh, a collision geometry in the form of a sphere and see what happens if we move that inside the simulation. Something like this. So we can move it around. And finally, we're going to add some wind and uh, make it blow in one direction or in the other direction and then see that the cloth acts like this. So now I'm going to go through this uh, script step by step and explain you the individual components. So we will start with a, a blank canvas. Um, as you can see in Flex, you have different um, different component categories. One is the engine that is most important. I'm going to drag the engine right here. That's the main engine component. 
Then we have composition and decomposition um, components and setup components. Uh, if we see some of the inputs um, of the engine, we see params, colliders, and so on and so on. But most important for us now is the scene input. And that basically defines how the scene looks like, what uh, objects are in the scene, and uh, uh, yeah, exactly how the simulation should look like. So I'm going to add that to the engine component. And now you can already see that it uh, asks for particles, fluids, and so on and so on, different kind of constraints. Um, we will, of course, play with the cloth component because that's what we want to do. So when you look here, this, the very first one, is cloth from mesh. And uh, I will add that to um, the cloth input. Uh, also, let me add a reset button. Okay, so far we have an empty um, simulation setup. Now we'll just copy and paste from a different file that I have open um, the components that generate the mesh. So I basically drew this underlying mesh by hand, uh, added it into Grasshopper. And with the Weaver by Triangles component, I um, made it more or make it more detailed. So um, you can see that when I have as the level one, it doesn't really uh, subdivide the mesh so much. Um, you want to think about how many files or how many springs you can add to your simulation in order for it to run smooth. But I'm going to stick with five now. Um, then I think. I'm welding the mesh, cleaning it up a little bit. Basically, it doesn't change a lot. The last thing I do is, um, is just moving it upwards so it hangs upwards in our simulation environment. How you come up with this mesh is up to you. Just make sure that the mesh is clean and it doesn't have duplicate uh, vertices. Um, the scene component will try to get rid of duplicate um, mesh vertices, but yeah, maybe just don't mm, have a risk or anything. Um, then, last but not least, I'm going to show you that I also have these three anchor points, so they're just point components that I made somehow um, on these edges. Okay, now that we have the mesh, I can turn off the preview again and simply connect the mesh to the cloth mesh inputs. Okay, it doesn't, it doesn't turn gray, why not? What does it show us? Um, input parameter gint failed to collect data. Now gint stands for group index. That basically helps you tell the solver um, which uh, material group this specific component belongs to. For example, if you have a fluid that you make out of different components, then you want to tell the solver that they all belong to one and the same fluid group. But I will keep that at zero for now. And as a general rule of thumb, just make sure that whenever you have different objects, that they should all have a different, unique uh, group index. So now the component turns gray. Obviously, we still have to um, connect our anchors to the cloth. And I will also add um, a mass at the beginning. So that's basically the mass per particle. That should be, say, 0.3, could be 1 as well. I will also add some stretch um, stiffness and some bending stiffness. Okay, so our cloth um, is ready to go. So now if we had hit reset and go, we can see nothing. That is because in order to get the cloth information out of the solver, we will have to use the decomposition get cloth component and connect it to the solver and also connect the cloth to, um, to the actual cloth. So now you can already see the object. When you go with your mouse over the outputs, you will see that there's no actual geometric output. That is made by default because uh, FlexOver is designed to be as fast as possible. So whenever you um, retrieve visual or geometric information from the solver, that slows down the simulation a bit. Um, so therefore, by default, this value for n, that is um, the number of iterations uh, between geometric output is set to zero. That just means it doesn't give you any geometric output. 
But if I set that to one that tells this, uh, that tells the cloth component that uh, in every iteration I want to get the actual geometric output. So now you can also see with your when you go with your mouse over it that you get the actual mesh and uh, points uh, outputs. Um, by default, these points are still not shown because again that would slow down the simulation. So you would have to connect another point con uh, container to see the points being output. You can also visualize these vectors. Those are the movement vectors for each particles, uh, for each particle, sorry, by hitting the um, vector display and connecting it here. But as you can see, they are really big. So I will just scale them down a little bit so it looks a little bit nicer. So here you can, you can already see that um, this computation takes a little time, this computation takes a little time, and therefore um, the simulation gets a little bit slower. Or at least the display output gets a little bit slower. The actual uh, simulation behind the scenes should just be as fast as usual. If we now pause the simulation and zoom in a little bit, we see that for each vertex or for each particle, you have like a velocity um, vector defined. It's just to play around. Maybe you find some useful uh, use case for this um, for this function. Okay, let's continue. Now, as you can see, this um, cloth behaves a little bit weird. It's really stretchy, even though we defined our um, stretch stiffness to be very high. And it also moves like indefinitely. It doesn't seem to ever slow down. Um, that is because, again, by default, FlexHub is made to run as fast as possible. But that doesn't necessarily mean that it also runs as accurate as possible. So in order to get more accurate, non-stretchy results, we will add um, Flex Solver options. I will connect them here and define the inputs. So DT is um, is a defined a uh, time step uh, between each iteration. So the simulation would attempt between every every time step to move the simulation 0 0.01667 seconds ahead. Um, that is fine. But then this uh, this time step is by default always di uh, divided into sub steps, which are at three now. And I will increase them to say eight and add them here. So now in these uh, kind of in these 0 0.01667 seconds, um, the solver behind the scenes performs seven uh, sorry eight sub steps, and collision between particles is always computed um, at each sub step, not once per these seconds, but at each sub step. Then each subset again is made out of uh, a number of sub iterations, and the number of sub iterations basically defines how accurate the simulation would be. By default, it's set to three. I will set it to eight now, and we should actually see that it runs a little bit um, more accurate, or it doesn't move um, so stretchy anymore. That looks a little bit better. But you can still see that the simulation is kind of uh, very energetic. There's, there's lots of uh, energy in the particles and they don't really slow down. So in order to get even better results, we will have to add some um, parameters, like simulation parameters or params. Um, those are also here in the setup compartment. And you can either add them by defining all the different values. They are set to their default values here. Or you can also load it from a file. So you can, once you have defined your, um, your parameters, you can hit right click and save parameters as some sort of, um, as some sort of Excel, uh, XML file, or then load them back in again by defining the path to this little component. But I will keep them here for now. And um, yeah, now we could play around with it a little bit, but I would just copy and paste them from the previous file because I found some, um, some good setup or some good definition for our parameters. And I will just use that. So for now, I will not go over what the individual parameters do. You can always retrieve the, um, 
the information about what they do uh, from mouse over. For example, radius defines the interaction radius between particles and so on and so on. I just played around with it and found that these parameters work really nice. And fine tuning the parameters is actually uh, a little bit difficult, I would say. Now, finally, we're just going to define a wind vector here. And uh, because I'm lazy, I'm also going to copy and paste them from our from my other file here. That's basically just a vector acting on the entire mesh. So now we even have some wind. And you can see that as soon as I plug it in, the simulation already reacts to my wind. I can play with it, make it go in different directions. I can make it go up. And so on and so on. Now, last but not least, um, we will add uh, a colliding object. So when you go to the setup compartment again, there is um, the collision geometry component that I'm going to connect to the colliders as well. And here you have some different um, objects that you can add. Uh, I'm going to add a sphere. And again, I will copy and paste it from my other file. And it's basically just a grasshopper um, that is basically just a grasshopper sphere. And as soon as I add it and maybe turn around the wind, you should see that it interacts with the sphere. I can now move that sphere up and down and see that it already acts. Okay, um, just a word to the colliders. I could have defined this uh, collision geometry also as a mesh, like a, like a mesh sphere, but um, the engine natively supports a number of, uh, of easy collision geometries that are cheap to compute, and those are planes, spheres, and boxes. So whenever you have one of these, um, try, to, uh, try to use the upper inputs. Whenever you have something more complicated, use the meshes. Or, um, or convex meshes for that matter, um, but those are slower. So yeah, if you can try to use the upper ones. And that's it basically. So while this is uh, simulating a little bit more, um, just some final words. Um, so what I'm using here is a pretty um, beefy graphics card, a GTX 1080. So the, um, the simulation speed is pretty high. Maybe you would get some different results depending on your hardware. Then once again, if you're interested in um, maybe co-developing um, Flex CLI or Flex Hopper, refer to the GitHub uh, link that I posted above. Um, otherwise, we are done here and I wish you a good day.